Hello. Oh, hi hey, there. Hey, everybody. I was informed that I had managed to read ahead of the Dead Space stream chats, and I missed some. I've gone back and collected them. I have a little look see at them. Starting with, on Oni Plays, they once had an AI script generator make a nostalgia critic review of Boy in the Striped Pajamas. Okay. <laughs> but I wonder how <laughs> real that was. I wonder if it was good. Sure, it was great. Imagine, imagine nostalgia critic makes a video saying I'm going to be replaced by AI. <laughs> like you uh... could never be replaced by AI, not you. Can it's they, too special. Yeah, can they even use AI to recreate that kind of potent cringe? Like that's a very specific flavor. You know, mm. I don't want to underestimate AI. I don't want to underestimate AI or Nostalgia Critic. True. Lord Longbong of Mewlington Abbey. A good chance of a Kong Fap. Peter Jackson's Long Kong. When there's less going on, <gasps> be a movie fap for the ages. Yes, hello, Wagsies. Riches for. Well, oh, hello. Um, yeah, it's that's definitely a possibility. I'm thinking that could. So. I'm thinking that could happen. Definitely we have been on the cards. Crazier things have been requested of us. That's for sure. I mean, it's crazy once you get all the things out that are currently in production. It's like, if someone made a list of all the different stories we've covered, it would start to get kind of crazy, like, how long it's getting through, you know, main podcasts or movies, TV, stuff. And I think Long Kong is more than happy to join that party. Who knows when. Um, second half of that thing about the AI... Nostalgia Critic says, uh, and in it, it had uh, Doug criticizing it for being one-sided politically. <laughs> Since Zach lost it, y'all would love uh, Odie Plays. Come on, I don't deny at all I'd love Odie Plays. It's just that that particularly sounds hilarious. Boy, the striped pajamas goes one-sided politically. <laughs> See, I'd love to make <laughs> a review a little... of like, a Teletubbies episode that way. That would be really fun. Use the powers of interpretation. I'd probably want to do it like both ends as well, like as though I'm synthetic man and um, I don't know, like Anita Sarkeesian at the same time. <laughs> Can those worlds be mixed? Yeah, like you know, Tinky Winky represents the strong white male, and this episode he falls down the hill, and that <laughs> represents the end of like <laughs> patriarchy. I feel like it would start getting really confused. <laughs> yeah. Uh, somehow Disney got Studio Ghibli to make an animated short about Grogu, and it's about as worthless as all the other Disney Star Wars stuff. Really? I'm guessing that was part of the Visions anthology thing? Oh, okay. Is it just it being Well, cute? how much control do they have over the, uh, over the script is an interesting question when it comes to those anthologies. Yeah, I... I really hope that the Ardman one is awesome, because they are making one for the, uh, for the next like set of uh shorts oh is it gonna be like claymation and everything well it's oddman so you figure it'll be in their signature style which sounds really cool uh conceptually huh. i'll be well, i'll definitely be watching that uh, one yeah i am uh consider me interested yeah i hope it's good finally some good fucking food um which technically makes it ghibli's worst creation and it's only three minutes well yeah i mean it would be interesting to see uh still mm. Does make us pang? Does make sense. Make us pang. Bring the subject matter. Make us pang. And Dead Space really did have its time, you know, the remake. But it's like it's over now. Resident Evil Four is about to arrive. He's bursting into my turn, which is a good thing. It had a decent amount of time in the spotlight, it and it seems to be very highly regarded. So I was thinking to very myself, good. Um, yeah, it had, a, it had a pretty good launch, I think, and a good time in the spotlight. But it definitely did. Uh, this Resident Evil 4 launch, like, could you ask for a better launch? Like, giving out a demo that people adored, and then all these 10 out of 10 scores coming in, uh, and just basing it on the game. It's been like, extremely well, yeah. I'm curious if it'll break any hope. records. And from what I've seen, which is very little, it seems to be very, very, very much gameplay focused. Um, yes. Like, and... proper gameplay focused, not just put white dot on enemy head, click seven times. Hope, our hope, enemy is dead. Um, I have but heard it, 
the, this one especially from people who've completed it already, which apparently there's a lot of people in the world that have done that, that this one has hyper replayability compared to basically all the other Resident Evils, including the remake. Fucking good. Because that's what I, I want this to do really well so that we get more stuff like this style well, of Resident I mean, Evil. Something that's been pointed out already is that thus far into this year, this year is, I mean, it's obviously we're only about three months in, but all of the most anticipated, most highly regarded stuff that's come out is like Dead Space Remake, Resident Evil 4 Remake's been reviewed very well, Metroid Prime Remastered everybody loves. It's just yeah, interesting, isn't it? It's pretty funny. Meanwhile, a lot of the new releases have kind of just like, oh, yeah, all right, yeah, whatever. Like, nobody really cares. It's all this older, older games. Nostalgia, that's our era. Well, well, I mean, to the point that 2000 stuff is the the nostalgic stuff. That's It seems like that's the way it works. Once it gets to about 20 years old, that's yeah. when it starts to become really nostalgic. Yeah, I think it's just the ages for people. You know, that's long enough ago to where it doesn't necessarily seem old to a lot of people, and it's in their memory. Well, it's, it's old enough to where that... there's a lot of people that the originals as well. A lot of adults now would have played these as kids. Uh, Resident Evil 4 and Metroid Prime and stuff. Even Dead Space, yeah, there might be some people. Um, Vampire Survivors is so zen. Yes, I... You guys played that at all? I have not. But, don't think so. I've heard it's good, though. Old... Twin stick shooter when you have one stick moves, one stick shoots in all directions. Yeah, that's usually uh, twin yeah. stick, like from an isometric oh, or wait. like top you know, down. Kind of lying because all of the shooting is automatic, so I guess it. Does. You know, you only move really. Yeah, oh, from what okay. I understand, a lot of people love that game, including me. I find it very, very fun. Yeah, high five. Is it vampire survivors? The uh, only plays of Dead Space is great. They have no idea how the PC version... They have no idea how the PC version is at the start. Hilarity ensues. Or how that works, exactly. I mean, like, the they PC don't know what to expect. Or... The start? or, like, the controls, or...? Don't know. I finally played Titanfall 2 for the first time. What an experience. It makes me more sad that EA cancelled the supposed Titanfall 3 Respawn was working on. Yep, but uh, Apex Legends is more successful. And Titanfall 2 didn't make its money, as far as I know, so... It's a risk. I don't even know the full story of it, but I've heard people say it's about the marketing of it. Uh, Titanfall 2 released between Battlefield 1 and Call of Duty Infinite Warfare. Like, they're, they're, those games were two weeks divided, and uh, Titanfall 2 was right in the middle. So it wow. was it was doomed. There was no way, and apparently that was Respawn's choice, not EA's, which is baffling. Um, no clue. Yeah, they were Titanfall, very Ooh. like Titanfall Two is is uh the best of those three games. Oh yeah, Titanfall Two is one of the best shooters like of recent memory. Um, but it's still Titanfall, right? It was still a relatively new franchise, and especially like the single player component was like unproven at the time. And the first Titanfall still had a so-so reputation at the time. Yeah, it, w w the, like that game was great at its core, but uh, no campaign offerings really. Um, it like Titanfall Two is a very robust, complete package, um, but like it, it just these, released at a time it when it's like, oh, are you going to choose between established brands? And particularly, the hype for like Battlefield One was insane. Um, it was the worst time to release it. They should have released it. Like in March or something, like they did the first game. Yeah. Oh, oh, and then there's also the Titanfall one was not on PlayStation. That was uh part of the the era of a lot of Xbox PC, you know, like exclusivity or whatever. So yeah, it's just unfortunate because it's it's a fantastic shooter, and we're never Absolutely. gonna get it. We never will. It's never gonna happen. Uh, probably not. A shame. You see, Jim's take. Sigh. We actually covered it. Cringe. It's a big cringe. Muller, I was wrong. I was among the members of chat who noticed Synthetic Man in chat, and we were yelling at our screams and amongst ourselves to let him on and defend himself. 
but we were all fools. We grew angry in our ignorance of the true extent of his crazy and w uh, the well-founded reasons for you ignoring him and us. So on behalf of that, uh, that I uh, participated, I apologize. Absolute worries. I, I know that chat get excited and they want particular things to happen, but of course, uh, once I had seen what I had seen in all those clips, there was potential at one point to be like, yeah, you could talk to him. And then I was like, oh, oh he's doing no. this. No, you're like, like a crazy actual you're like actually one of those really bad people that you don't talk to yeah and it's funny how like a lot of people focus on all of that in in a sense trying to highlight that he's still honest and still good at his job and stuff and i was like did you miss the first like three and a half hours of that video he's terrible at his job he sucks he's one of the worst reviewers i've ever seen and we've seen some shit to your reviewers we don't often do man um, synthetic man is awful at his job we mostly cover movie reviewers and their job I consider to be easier than game reviewers a lot of the time. It feels like there's less to fuck up on for the movie. Delving into uh, mechanics a lot is, more uh, finite uh, stuff to cover, I think. And it just... Yes, not as much material, and mechanics can be tricky. And mechanics are a lot... Like, there, there is often, like, a much more apparent right and wrong when it comes to figuring out mechanics. Yeah. It's and... not quite that rigid but there there's there's certainly more quantifiable claims that you can make about how a mechanic works than you know a story with that said and plus it was really bad <laughs> like he was really bad yep. at the game and he turned that into like an attempt at criticizing it for what it was it's just no nope, that doesn't work and like he openly admitted he hated the game before he even fucking played it so All that cultural uh, yeah, stuff. Yeah, feel free to defend him if you want, guys, but uh, probably not a great idea for those who still do. He's the only honest reviewer left, right? Don't let the <laughs> brain rot that's taken over him take over you. You don't have to, you don't have to give in. Which is funny, because as of recently, as far as I know, he called uh, The Last of Us subtle propaganda, and everyone <laughs> is once again praising him for being honest, while me and Drinker are like clearly liars doing it for money. I was just sitting there like, you guys understand the unpopular take is that Last of Us is good. Like, we, mm -hmm. we had every chance to jump on the train of it's, uh, Last of Us is shit. I remember, we didn't expect it to be good. I like how oh. that just gets forgotten. We weren't expecting it to be good. For and then we months thought it was. we said that. For fucking months yep. we said that. Yeah, the obvious presumption was that Neil would infect the previous story with uh, an attempt to make it fit better. And everyone is still trying to run with that, which is just, it's so funny because the big issue we're going to take with season two now is it won't fit with season one. Mm-hmm. You know, Neil can feel otherwise, but like, we'll be there. We'll make the arguments. So. Yeah, we, uh, we often take positions that uh, can make us look crazy to a lot of people, but it's all because we're trying to be honest. Tell you what we see. Much like with Ragnarok. I, I didn't expect that game to be that good. Yeah, <laughs> it was really impressive. Uh, hey, Mola, what should I play for my first blind playthrough out of Bloodborne? Oh, DS3 or Elden Ring. Already had DS1 spoiled, also high rags. Is... Hello. So if it's Bloodborne, DS3 or Elden Ring, um, it depends. If you're only going to play one of them, Bloodborne. If you're going to play all of them, I might suggest DS3, Bloodborne, then Elden Ring. Just... Uh... Because DS3 is like a crystallized version of DS1. At least a lot of people see it that way in terms of like building on the mechanics, though that the world is lesser. Which I don't think anyone's going to disagree with that one. And then Bloodborne is like, oh, what if it were fast and you can break away into like a side bit of content while then you go to Elden Ring, which is basically open world Dark Souls. So, uh, that should probably work out. But if you could only play one, have to go with Bloodborne. Beautiful game. Uh, death of the author exists, therefore criticism is not objective. What does this even mean? How do I respond to this? I have no idea. Uh, I don't. You'd have to. You'd have to ask them what they mean by that, because that's. I think that's uh, a non sequitur. Death of the author doesn't exist, therefore, like, what is what is 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 the claim that like, if death of the author didn't exist and all of the statements of the author were definitive, that therefore you would be able to make in unassailable arguments about a story? I guess so. I guess they're saying, if not for death of the author, you would have to just go with whatever the author says in terms of what can be oh, critical of their work or not, which is retarded. That sounds, yeah, that sounds absurd to me. If that's what they're saying, anyway, yeah, you, you need to ask them what they mean by all of those words, because I don't know. 
Um, keep one, delete two. RE4, Dead Space 1, and Dark Souls 1. Seems like a pretty great remake from what I've seen. Hi, Rags. You ever get around to playing RE8? Oh, I think. Um, RE8? Uh, five, RE8? Yeah, Village. Yeah, you've played it. But you didn't play yeah. it, remember? Oh, yeah, that's right. There was the meme that I hadn't played it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I get it. I get it. Yeah, I did. Uh, I, I did. I got bored on my second playthrough just breaking the game by just moving <laughs> around where the game didn't want me to. It was really fucking pathetic. Yeah, we harbor a little bit of a... Bit of a I, f I hate that nightmare. game. In terms of the choice that is given, I think Dead Space is the least influential of the three. So... Well, so yeah. for me, I'm going to get rid of uh, probably going to be Dead Space that I feel really bad about it. Well, it almost yeah. seems unfair um, because, yeah, Resident Evil 4 was massively influential and so was Dark Souls. Removing them removes a lot of like subsequent changes to the gaming world, whereas Dead Space, not so much. Well, uh, equipped... Infested suit before meeting Hammond at the bridge. When Isaac takes off his helmet, he actually takes off his whole head. Yeah, it's funny. Yeah. Good stuff. Headless Isaac Easter egg. On the Netflix anthology Love, Death, and Robots, some episodes are simply cool concepts like a drug trip or an entire zombie apocalypse in six minutes. Others are entirely worthless. Um... I guess, yeah, I think that's fair. I've seen all of season one, and I got kind of, I think, Brinker recommended me one or two from season three, and I was just like, fine. Probably would have watched all of them if I had time to burn, but I had other stuff I needed. Maybe it's better to get, like, a recommendation of all the best ones. Uh, I've, heard of, I've heard it's very mixed bag, too. I've heard some are good, some are bad. Some are genuinely good short stories. Overall, I recommend it. Oh, that was it. Yeah, okay. Fair enough. I just wish Nicole didn't look like a 55-year-old. Uh, you'll have to uh, well, take I mean, that up with the voice it, actress, yeah. Tanya Clark. Uh, but also, just chill out. <laughs> also, she's 51, and she looks damn good for 51, so I don't know what you guys want. They want a young girl. Like, ooh, oh. young girl. That would be weird. Then you'd be complaining about why Isaac is dating such a really young girl. I'd and say also that just, wow, that young girl got a pretty huge role in the... Uh, must be really fucking good at his job, I guess. Blake Feppard is a bad person. Yeah, I don't know who that is either. Hello, Mubler. After saying you weren't going to make a Glass Onion Rage video, I tried making my own Glass Onion Shattered Themes. It's an hour and 40 minutes... 48 minutes long and live now. All views appreciated. Keep up the good work. Hi, Rye Hags. Oh, hello. Uh, excellent. Stuff. Criticism of that film should probably exist because hard to break through that barrier of, but it's supposed to be retarded. Ah. Hello, cast. I recently started a new job and I'm looking for a new apartment. Thank you for being a source of entertainment and familiarity through this turbulent and transitional time of my life. Also, oh, you bet. Oh, wait. Well, yeah, absolutely. Second half is like a question about. But uh, hope that's all because Dead Space was a little ago to me. Done with that. Or not. Either way, hope is well. And uh, <clears throat> also, what are some examples of your favorite character arcs in media, i.e., the classic hero's journey where they learn confidence or humility? Oh, favorites? Hmm. <laughs> Funnily enough, um, Kung Fu Panda nails the hero's journey really well. Oh, yeah. Uh, some of my favorite arcs, like three of them of all time, are in Buffy and Angel. We got mm. Iron Man's arc in the MCU. Obviously bumpy, but it's pretty damn good. Learning confidence or what? Humility. Confidence or humility. Boots in last week, confidence right? or humility. Yeah, humility. Yeah, he, it's kind of both. He learns. He kind of learns both of those things at once. Um, he gains true confidence essentially through recognizing his own mortality and accepting it. 
So that is a really good example. I figured the question was asking about like favorite types of um, general story arcs or like story structures. I thought they were asking specifically four examples of hero's journey types, but still, the ones I just mentioned from uh, Buffy wouldn't necessarily be hero's journey anyway. Uh, But yeah, I mean, the thing is, I don't have a, I kind of like all arcs if they are well executed. As long as it's good, I'm, yeah, I'm more or less on board. Uh, we had to remove the blackface episode because keeping it would suggest that we support racism. Got in quotes from Netflix about the community episode. I hope that isn't actually what they said because that's retarded. I don't understand how you can't apply that to literally anything. Anything controversial. Is there anything new or is it just the same but Isaac talks now? Yeah, there's a lot of new stuff, actually. There's a lot of new uh, stuff. Yeah. yeah, I mean, the inter, uh, the interconnected issue more. Well, and the, uh, the telekinesis working properly weapon. Mm-hmm. I guess, uh, yeah. That's based, I guess. You'd... Hello, gentlemen, and hi, Rags. What are your thoughts on El Camino? Ah. Personally, I quite like it. Uh... Um, it was. It was. I've not uh, seen it. Yeah, I don't know. I thought it was okay. I remember coming away from it thinking, I don't know. I think I kind of didn't assumed, need that. Yeah, I assumed all of that happened that way, except for I guess the crazy encounter with those assholes. I mean, that encounter only happens because if it didn't, kind of boring, wouldn't it? There wouldn't be a much of a complete film. Yeah, worthwhile or worth of story. It would have ended fairly quickly. Uh, I would like to recommend the YouTuber Elvis the Alien as a pro- potential guest. Um, hey, if he's up for it, 100%. Uh, he's made some videos recently about Bloodborne. Okay. Anything and everything. I would... Oh, yeah. Yo, Massives, keep up the good work. Anyone who thinks Nicole looks older must be forgetting about how she looked in Doc's... Uh, Dead Space 2. It's basically just HD Nicole now. I'm willing to say she looks different from the original game. It's just that I don't think it's a downgrade. I think it's more accurate. I guess what the comment is, more, is pointing out is that she definitely looks older in 2 than she did in the first one. Which, considering that she would, she would have been the same age, right, of like that mental projection... It's just, it, yeah, like it was, it's, it's in line with one of the games anyway. Or more it's, in line. I don't remember people talking about it with Dead Space 1 and 2. And yeah, you're right, she does look significantly older in Dead Space. I wonder if they'll remake that one. Who knows? Trump voice. Super Mario, he goes from big to small. Comes from a different place, and that's okay. The place called Italy. <laughs> okay. Wonderful oh, people in Italy. Wonderful people in Italy. It's a wonderful country. Great pizza. Great pizza. Wonderful pizza. After the Ragnarok, I played all the God of War games, and now it's one of my favorite series. Also, hi to all. Yeah, that's... that is Metal's favorite game. Is Ragnarok and favorite series. Not too far behind him oh, on those. Wow. I have a very special love for God of War. It's such a fun little franchise. Little franchise? Yep, tiny. <laughs> He's on my screen. I'm looking at him running around. He's a tiny little guy. I miss the airplane era of spoof movies. Naked gun, hot shots, loaded weapon. All great. If it's not nostalgia, what makes those jokes still funny? They're written by very in- talented people. <laughs> Seriously. They're very like... entertaining Something that I'm uh, noticing watching uh, Aeroplane is that uh, a lot of the jokes are visual, um, whereas, as has been pointed out in plenty of videos, namely the uh, Every Frame of Painting one on Edgar Wright, a lot of what we see in like a lot of comedies now is very much just characters talking and that being like the joke baked into it, but like lots of visual gags. There are a ton of those in, uh, in Airplane. Um, Naked Gun as well. There's just like a, a a lot of variety in terms of the jokes that are crammed into those films. 
same for like Pink Panther. Um, same for uh, uh, um, Austin Powers as well. Um, I'm out of good ideas. Guess what's left? That's the quote. Bad ideas. Oh. Uh, you must desaturate the bodies so that they don't get back up. Rock Samson. Samson. Uh, I don't get it. Who's Brock Samson? He's from uh, Venture Bros. You desaturate things? I don't know. I guess uh, he's talking about zombies. I haven't watched too much of the show. What, I've, what I have seen, I've liked, but... Well, Maybe he's talking about, like, zombies. He knows how to deal with zombies. You gotta, like, make sure that all the blood's gone or something like that. On that note, that is Twitch, the end of you know, the Dead Space, true. lads. I will do Dream Labs. This will be about, who knows, could be anything. Um, I forgot to say this during the Black Adam EFAP, but when Satan was walking around, I looked at his chest and thought, whoa, is that the Star of David on his chest? Then in another shot, I realized, oh, it's a pentagram on his chest. Never mind. Imagine. Don't confuse him. Oh my gosh, that'd be hilarious. It'd be <laughs> terrible, like, but hilarious. <laughs> Um, well, we know the, what the people who made Black Adam think. <laughs> Jeez. I thought the 2022 Pinocchio was pretty neat overall. Not as good as Puss in Boots, but still a good watch. The only major problem I had with it was the scene where Pinocchio kissed Geppetto on the lips with a full tongue action. It was a little strange, but I think it was really important for his character. Artistic choice, you know. You don't want to restrict the art by restricting the artist. Uh, Muller and Rags, I want you both to shout the N-word at Fringy with as much prejudice as you can, okay? Get ready. I'll Absolutely. write it Absolutely. To say it as the last word of this message. Here it comes. Shout this N-word at Fringy, and it says, uh, no. No! No! That's, that's pretty mean of you guys. What? Yelling at me. Well, yelling to you. I can't tell if Nicole was a good person or not. They should have made that more clear in the remake by having her save a pregnant zebra on the Ishimura. Yeah, well. <laughs> Just a zebra roaming around on the ship. <laughs> I mean, hopefully in the next Dead Space remake they can fix that. <laughs> they make another one in like 20... <laughs> well, I mean, who knows what, what it looks like. What if they remake Resident Evil again? The first one. But like in the, the over-the-shoulder perspective. The loss of Fringy. What are the moral and ethical qualms that would keep us from time traveling and killing baby Hitler in his sleep? Why not cap every despot as they are young to prevent mass suffering? If one can, isn't it more unethical not to? Hi, Rags. Hi. Wait, why are you, um, why are you gonna... uh, The issue with going back in time and killing Hitler when he was a baby is that he hasn't done anything wrong yet. Um, and you're operating under the assumption that he will do those things. Uh, Why do we which... have to kill him? Why can't we just, you know, raise him properly? <laughs> <laughs> I don't yeah, know, exactly. If you got to travel back in time, you know, like seek other. So, and then, of course, there's the standard time travel concern of what what are what are the uh, roll knock on effects of this? Yeah, there's that too. We all both. You know, but, yeah. Uh, will you guys address the ongoing squat genocide in Loompa Land? I know Mullen Rags have large investments in the meme plantations that the native squats have been culled to make room for, so it's a conflict of interest. Maybe Fringy can do it? Thanks. I don't have any what, comments to what, make sorry? about Loompa Land. I don't know anything about that. Yeah, this is news to me. Sounds pretty bad. Uh, maybe we'll look into it in future. I don't know about this. We are anti sport um, genocides. Cruelty, yes. Uh, say Crispy Critters in your best Albert Wesker impression. <laughs> crispy Critters. Crispy Critters. Crispy Critters. <laughs> crispy Critters, yeah. That's my idea. Damn it. Oh, I guess I might as well. Crispy Critters. That's why I wanted to remake Resident Evil 5. Get Wesker back. <laughs> yeah. I was talking to Az about it. He said he doesn't want a five remake because I think it was very good. And it's like, is that not the Isn't reason? Isn't that more you of could, a reason yeah, to you do could it? Use yeah, to remake it. Because it's not like they're not aware of what people didn't like about Resident Evil Five, right? 
I figure that they're well aware of what people's complaints are. Given that Resident is, Evil 2 remake isn't anything like that. Surely they would have to make it co-op though, at least, right? Because that's what everyone like likes about the story. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Suppose we'll find out. And then if they remake six, that'll be hilarious. And then they remake seven. It's like, wait, <laughs> this is getting weird now. <laughs> Uh, been listening to your game streams the last couple of months. Thank you. No problem. I do enjoy playing the video. You'll be getting a lot more of that soon with Resident. Uh, so, we're the twins in this game. Basically, the Lady Ds from Resident Evil 8, in a sense, heavily marketed and a focal point for a lot of the casual players and non players, but in actuality, only present in a small portion of the game in totality. Also, high rags. Hello. I guess they're talking about Atomic Heart with the. Robot ladies. I think people be very critical of that as being like bottom of the barrel sexual marketing, or whatever. All right. Uh, I mean, it makes sense that this guy would have robots that are, you know, very feminine looking, you know, and pleasing, and they look very expensive, and you know. Well, and if someone said, then, oh yeah, but they've just written it that way to just fashion. Like, okay, so who cares? Yeah. So that they wrote it a certain way to make sense. Yeah. Good. Like, you're just gonna be critical of all sex scenes. Wow, they only wrote it that way to have the sex. Really appealing to the fundamental things of interest for humans. Disgusting. Uh, hi, Rags. If you're having computer trouble, I Hello. wouldn't necessarily take computer advice from a guy who knowingly left a plug-in on his Minecraft server that could upload files through it onto his personal computer. Anyway, have some Twix money. Okay. I, like Twix. I don't know anything about the Minecraft stuff. Um, dear Mola Moulinette, will you please pl say a few words about Jeff Bridges in the Tyler Perry story, The Old Man? It would be cool if you could watch it with friends. This is the metal, emu picking for fringy, or oh, emu, but they spelt it with a bonus e. Um, Bridges for the good boy rags, thanks for Karen, by the way. Oh, no problem. Oh, yeah, Karen was fun. Um, and as for The Old Man, yeah, I haven't... It. Um, regarding diminishing returns for old IPs, it's because modern creatives don't understand or respect a level of work and vision that went into making these franchises the success stories they are. Success only inevitable in hindsight, never guaranteed. Uh, yeah, hence why we talk about that uh, quote from uh, Ian Malcolm in Jurassic Park. He says, you didn't Experience what it was like to gain what you have right now. You just had it from other people. Yeah, you didn't. Yeah, you didn't. You ba you basically you didn't earn it in a sense. You didn't go through the work of getting there. You just sort of, um, yeah, you you just took it from the top. You, you you took advantage of someone else's you know work, which we wouldn't be saying if all of these things were really good. If all these series were great. If all these IP extensions were good, and the people really respected where they came from and learned a lot from them. We wouldn't be having this conversation. I think there are still people who did inherit and then make good things out of it, I guess. I like that possible. Mm -hmm. uh, my drink is done in the freezer, so I'll be right back. Well. Do it there for you, will you? Oh, and are we waiting until he gets back? The worst thing about it is I wish you'd said something before, like, because we got one left. Oh. All right, well. I'm sure he'll be back yeah, any second. I suppose I'm doing okay. That's great. Playing any video games? Yeah, I'm playing Mario Kart. Think about switching out your main, I play this game, something else. Uh, well, I mean, should should another game sort of arise that it provides me such readily accessible fun? Um, cause it was, it was, uh, MCC for a while. Titanfall was, but that was a oh, long yeah. time ago. It, uh, tends to vary. Modern Warfare was it for a bit. Um, not too long though. And Halo Infinite, I was hoping would, would fill that role, but, uh, well. <laughs> they've added new content now after several, several months of, of basically nothing, so... I guess that's nice, but I don't know. That <laughs> just, I don't know. Seems like that game nobody cares anymore. It's over. Game on the end. 
Mm. Nice to flash forward and just know the he's going to drink on what I'll catch up about how he was he was he seemed partially depressed about the state of Star Wars, talking about how much they've destroyed everything. Um, yeah, I understand that. Like, I think at this point, I'm pretty checked out when it comes to Star Wars. It's like I'll I'll be keeping an eye on Andor, but like I don't really expect anything quality from any other production. Because like, even whenever um... that Ahsoka show comes out, it's probably going to be bad. Um, yeah. if they continue with like Book of Boba Fett. Or they do more Mando, it's gonna be bad. I just, I don't know. That new Acolyte show, I'm not sure why I would expect that to be great either if it's got, like, a lot of the same executive producers behind it. When we had, um, the whole, like, that episode three of Mando, as Rags dubbed it, the Diet Andor episode, because, yeah, it's, like, not, it wasn't that great. It was okay, uh, in a couple ways, and it's, like, that would be a good thing to move on from in future, but never gonna... Mm. Especially with the reaction it's had, a lot of people said like this just isn't Star Wars. I don't even know what that is anymore. What is Star Wars? What is Star Wars in twenty twenty three? Fucked it up so much that it's like, are we appealing to the OT, the prequels, or something else? Something of a thing in general? Because I remember the big thing that was said about the Force Awakens when it came out was that it felt like Star Wars. Yes, that's right. But Not anymore, <laughs> how many people are you gonna find standing for? Uh... For any of of those films, basically nobody does. Great uh, Skinwalker sort of thing, where it's, yeah, it probably tricked everyone into thinking it felt like it, and then it drove it into the. Mm. Are you back? I am back. So last one, we're discussing amazing old movies. I was thinking about Empire Strikes Back, and if it's a plot contrivance that Luke lands right next to Yoda, there is a line about life's is scanning but not about that area um he says it's teeming with life right he says there's life all over the place yeah it's i mean that's like a i i would rate that as the same problem you have on all of star wars where for some reason the place of activity on a planet is always just the one small area um, yeah like a planet is just you know if you're on tatooine it's always da -da -da. if you're at this is this da -da -da. yeah um i don't know if there's some level of I mean, yeah, he, from I, when I, he lands I, I to when he meets Yoda, there's still a decent chunk of time, and that you can assume Yoda uh, was walking on his way there. You know, like, it's a little bit... Even even then, that's a huge uh, convenience. Well, that's what I'm saying. It's a little bit distance of for Yoda, yeah. something. It's, it's not much. But it's the persistent Star Wars problem. The planet is just this one small area. One place, yeah. Yep. It's like... You know, and, and Mando, or Navarro will be this or that. It's like, this is one city, and it's not even a big one. It's like... It's, yeah, it's like a town on a be, planet. It's kind of... It, it is a town. To say that it's a city would be to overstate it. Like, it's pretty small. But that's the only place on Navarro, basically. That and the nearby... Uh, well, that base got destroyed, pretty much, so... That's about it. I want I want some recognition of acquiring coordinates as a thing that you need to do. That's you what they, a planet dude, isn't Ratchet enough. And Clank does that. I remember yeah. if you play the old Ratchet and Clank games, like when you get coordinates or when you go into a place, like that game recognizes that there are places on planets. It will say like you are going to Blackwater City on Rilgar. Like that's where you're going, not just like the planet. Because yeah, you are going to the planet, but you're going to a specific place. Yeah, Same with like big. if you're going to the Megacorp base, or uh, or if you were going to um, like the capital city on Marcadia. Like, there's it. Ratchet and Clank cared more about this than Star Wars has ever done. <laughs> I, yeah, it's it, like put into perspective of we all live on a planet, you know? I think about all the places on this planet. Yeah. You know, if you go said, to I'm Earth. going to Earth, it's like, okay, are you yeah. going to New He's York? Earth, are you going to guns. London? Are you going to Shanghai? Earth. Yeah. What does what, it even mean? Well, Ugh. that's the end of uh, the Streamlabs and Dead Space Lost Super Chats mini. Oh, look at that. 40 oh. minutes. It's like an actual mini episode. It's very like mini, kind of. <laughs> wow. Thank you all for, uh, for listening. Sorry we didn't get to these faster. Thank you very much for sending them in, of course. Oodle pip. Cheerio. Goodbye, Bye-bye.